Lafferty, the end is near. Technically, he's been on death row since 1985. Ron and his brother Dan Lafferty were members of the School of Prophets, a spin-off of fundamentalist Mormonism. Both were convicted of murdering their sister-in-law, Brenda Lafferty, and her young child. Ron claimed it was God's plan. Yes, I think I, I, think I noted that as a revelation that I had received uh, when I was in the School of the Prophets, yes. Dan Lafferty was convicted of the murders but is serving a life sentence when the jury couldn't reach a unanimous decision. Meanwhile, a different jury ordered Ron to be executed in 1985. It was appealed and eventually another jury reached the same conclusion 11 years later. 35 years later, Brenda Lafferty's family is still waiting. It just seemed like nothing was ever going to happen, and I still wonder if, if it'll even be in my lifetime. But Lafferty is running out of time. He's nearly exhausted all of his appeals. On October 17th, the 10th Circuit closed the door on Lafferty once and for all. A prosecutor with the Attorney General's office says the outcome wasn't surprising. Not at all. Uh, the, the motion that Mr. Lafferty filed was frivolous on its face. As a result, there's no more reviews pending in state and federal court. The next move could come from the Attorney General's office. But all federal jurisdiction is extinguished. The state of Utah is now free to seek an execution warrant. It's done. It's been through the double-checking, triple-checking process to make sure that everything was done right. In 1984, American Fork Police arrived at the home of Ellen and Brenda Lafferty. Inside, they found Brenda and her 15-month-old daughter, Erica, with their throats slashed. As we were driving home, I just remember having this really bad feeling and then receiving the phone call in the middle of the night from my dad. The last time I saw her was just five days earlier on her birthday, and how sad that was. She was so young, and how anything so evil could have happened to somebody like her. Brenda's brothers-in-law, Ron and Dan Lafferty, were eventually arrested, tried, and convicted. Dan, who planned the murders, was given a life sentence when one juror held out on the death penalty. But a different jury sentenced Ron Lafferty to die. He chose the firing squad. The motive? It was God's plan, according to Ron's infamous revelation letter, in which he wrote, Ye removed the following, including my brother's wife, and her baby. Yes, I think I, I think I noted that as a revelation that I'd received uh, when I was in the School of the Prophets, yes. The family is grateful and we feel like it's just as well that uh, he passed on his own. According to Sharon Weeks, Ron Lafferty was in a wheelchair and had a caretaker during his last year in prison. She wasn't surprised he passed away. I do know that he was frail and had been for some time that he had not been feeling well. I don't believe that he has been able to walk for a while. In 1984, her sister Brenda Lafferty and her young daughter Erica were brutally murdered by the Lafferty brothers. Both were convicted of the murders, but Dan Lafferty's life was spared and is serving a life sentence. But a different jury ordered Ron Lafferty to die. He chose the firing squad. The brothers were members of a fundamentalist religious group called the School of Prophet, and Lafferty claimed to have received a divine revelation to eliminate those who stood in the way. Prophecies are about to be fulfilled. Yes, I think I, I, think I noted that as a revelation that I'd received uh, when I was in the School of the Prophets, yes. And you still believe it was from God? Uh, I don't have any problem with that. But in that same prison interview from years ago, Lafferty denied murdering Brenda. Why would they execute me? They have no grounds whatsoever. I'm innocent of all their stupid charges. You didn't kill Brenda Lafferty? I never, I've never, I never admitted to that, no. But the jury didn't see it that way. Lafferty's appeals were nearly over. The attorney general's office claimed his execution was just months away. In the end, he avoided execution, but the sister of Brenda Lafferty doesn't feel cheated. I absolutely felt a huge amount of relief when I heard the news that he had passed because I would have preferred him to pass peacefully than to have to go through what all of Utah County has heard of the Lafferty boys. That's mostly a function of the lurid murders, of course, but the Lafferty surname had a certain prominence in the county even before Brenda and Erica Lafferty were killed. Watson Lafferty, the patriarch of the clan, was a chiropractor who ran a thriving practice out of his home in downtown Provo's historic quarter. He and his wife, Claudine, had six boys and two girls, 
in whom they instilled an unusually strong work ethic and intense devotion to the Mormon church. The entire family was admired for their industriousness and probity. Alan, the youngest of the Lafferty children, now in his mid-forties, works as a tile-setter, a trade he has plied since he was a teenager. In the summer of 1984, he was living with his 24-year-old wife and baby daughter in American Fork, a sleepy, white-bred suburb alongside the freeway that runs from Provo to Salt Lake City. Brenda, his spouse, was a one-time beauty queen, recognized around town from her tenure as the anchor of a news magazine program on Channel 11, the local PBS affiliate. Although she had abandoned her nascent broadcasting career to marry Alan and start a family, Brenda had lost none of the exuberance that had endeared her to television viewers. Warm and outgoing, she'd made a lasting impression. On the morning of July 24, 1984, Alan left their small duplex apartment before the sun was up and drove 80 miles up the interstate to work at a construction site east of Ogden. During his lunch break, he phoned Brenda, who chatted with him for a minute before putting their 15-month-old daughter, Erica, on the line. Erica gurgled a few words of baby talk. Then Brenda told her husband everything was fine and said goodbye. Alan arrived home around 8 that evening, tired from the long workday. He walked up to the front door and was surprised to find it locked. They almost never locked their doors. He used his key to enter, and then was surprised again by the baseball game blaring from the television in the living room. Neither he nor Brenda liked baseball. They never watched it. After he'd turned off the TV, the apartment seemed preternaturally quiet to him, as though nobody was home. Alan figured Brenda had taken the baby and gone out. I turned to go and see if maybe she was at the neighbor's, he explained later, and I noticed some blood near the door on a light switch. And then he saw Brenda in the kitchen, sprawled on the floor in a lake of blood. Upon calling Brenda's name and getting no reply, he knelt beside her and put his hand on her shoulder. I touched her, he said, and her body felt cool. There was blood on her face and pretty much everywhere. Alan reached for the kitchen phone, which was resting on the floor next to his wife, and dialed 911 before he realized there was no dial tone. The cord had been yanked from the wall. As he walked to their bedroom to try the extension in there, he glanced into the baby's room and saw Erica slumped over in her crib, in an odd position, motionless. She was wearing nothing but a diaper, which was soaked with blood, as were the blankets surrounding her. Alan hurried to the master bedroom, only to find the phone in there out of order as well, so he went next door to a neighbor's apartment, where he was finally able to call for help. He described the carnage to the 911 dispatcher, then called his mother. While he waited for the police to show up, Alan returned to his apartment. I went to Brenda and I prayed, he said, and then as I stood, I surveyed the situation a little more and realized that there had been a grim struggle. For the first time, he noticed that the blood wasn't confined to the kitchen. It smeared the living room walls, the floor, the doors, the curtains. It was obvious to him who was responsible. He'd known the moment he'd first seen Brenda on the kitchen floor. The cops took Alan down to the American Fork police station and grilled him throughout the night. They assumed he was the murderer, the husband usually is. By and by, however, Alan convinced them that the prime suspect was actually the oldest of his five brothers, Ron Lafferty. Ron had just returned to Utah County after spending most of the previous three months traveling around the West with another Lafferty brother, Dan. An APB went out for Ron's car, a pale green 1974 Impala station wagon with Utah plates. The slayings appeared to be ritualistic, which drew uncommon attention from the news media and put the public on edge. By the next evening, the Lafferty killings led news broadcasts across the state. On Thursday, July 26, a headline on the front page of the Salt Lake Tribune announced, Widespread search underway for American Fork murder suspect by Mike Gorell, Tribune staff writer, and Ann Shields, Tribune correspondent. Lawmen in Utah and surrounding states searched Wednesday for a former Highland Utah County City Councilman and religious fundamentalist charged with the Tuesday murders of his sister-in-law and her 15-month-old baby. Ron Watson Lafferty, 42, no address available, was charged with two counts of capital homicide in the deaths of Brenda Wright Lafferty, 24, and her daughter, Erica Lane. American Fork Police have not established a motive for the killings and have refused to comment on rumors that the suspect, an excommunicated member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, was involved with either polygamist or fundamentalist religious sects and that those ties may have contributed to the killings. 
Neighbors expressed disbelief that this sort of thing could happen in their area.